What's up guys, Jez here from Whiskify and welcome to episode 86 of Whiskify TV. So, as you can see, I have, helps if I have it the right way, I have a bottle of Evan Williams single barrel. Uh, it is 86.6 proof or 43% ABV for the Australians playing at home. Uh, it is eight years and six months old. It cost me $58. The RRP, R, 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 George R, R, Martin. Um, the RRP in Australia is $75 dues and US price can pick up from Total Wine for about $25. Um, so we will kick this off with a runs a new charred American oak cask and its mash bill is 78% corn, 10% rye and 12% malted barley. Uh, that is basically the same thing as what it was last week and it's basically the same juice. Only it's got a little bit more of an age statement on it, which is nice. So in theory, it should be twice as old as what it was last week. So as you can see, I go for my classic reach for my glass over here, but I don't have it, so we move on up in the world. As you can see, there is a bowl here. Now, we are falling on troubling times. My place, I've sent my glassware off to get engraved, and it is Whiskey Wednesday, and I don't have my glassware back. So, we have reached an issue. Let me bottle pop this. Oh, it's a bit of a spray, but this, oh, this cork is so dark. I like it. All right, let's go cheeky bowl pour. Beautiful. I don't really need much more than that. Hopefully this works. I haven't really drunk out of a bowl before and I don't want to fill the bowl up. Because, <sighs> you know, I just don't want to have to sit there and drink a bowl full of whiskey before I have to go to work later. Even though it'll be fun, I just don't feel like it'll work. But we're at two and a half minutes. I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Love it. Okay, let us crack in. So as per normal, I've done my tasting notes and everything. Just got all my notes prepared to make sure this runs smoothly. It normally doesn't, but just in case you're turning in for your first time, this is not normally how this goes. So uh, kicking off from where we were last week. Uh, last week I did the bottle in bond. The week before we did the standard stuff. I want to feel like this where this is somewhere in the middle, in between those two. Uh, it, it's starting to feel like, it's starting to feel like Evan Williams month. I, I realise I don't have my AirPods in, this is kind of like a weekly thing now. It just like, so hopefully the audio is not too bad, it kind of sounds alright, but it's pretty quiet outside, so. Let's hope it stays like that. Uh, where was I? Uh, yes, so. As you guys may notice from the front of the bottle, this has um, like the single barrel, it says vintage on there and it has put in oak in 2012. Uh, Evan Williams, I believe is the only company to come out with like a, a vintage aspect. Um, you normally notice it on your uh, wines and that. So yeah, um, Evan Williams has obviously brought that idea across and said, put in oak 2012. If we flip it over to the back, it's pretty standard for a single barrel. They just normally put like the barreled on, the barrel number and the bottled on. This one is the 24th of the 1st, 2012. It was put into a barrel. Uh, it was bottled on the 20th of the 7th, 2020. Uh, and its barrel number is 1207. So... From that, it would give me an idea that it's, what did I say, eight years and six months old, if my maths is any good. If it's not, someone can tell me in the comments. Now, uh, normally these uh, single barrel variants for the Evan Williams, we're normally looking at around seven to eight years old. Uh, lucky for me, this is eight and a half, but I've read and seen that you're looking upwards of 10 years on the very lucky barrels. So, excuse me. Terrible. Um, 
so yeah obviously this didn't hit that but it's well within their age range they wanted so very happy happy i got a slightly older and not a younger one so i'll kick it off because that is all i have for the the notes because we went every we went through everything last week if you want history go to the first one if you want me talking about bottle in bond go to last week's if you want to watch me drink out of a bowl stick close to this one so i'm actually i wonder if this will work because on the nose, I'm getting ceramic bowl, which is, I'm assuming, is not part of the whiskey. So luckily, I was able to do my tasting notes earlier. And I really don't like using anything other than my... Good, we're still recording. My uh, Denver and Lily glasses that I normally use. So I'm getting kind of like a initial like big vanilla hit off the nose i'm getting like a little bit of oak and that's about it um earlier when i was able to taste i was able to get some uh like toasted marshmallow kind of vibes out of it um kind of like a like graham cracker graham cracker like s'mores kind of vibe which was fun let's go mm. Mm. Oh. all right so it's straight off the bat with this one i don't get any bowl influence which is nice but um, it's got plenty of pepper, plenty of heat on there. Problem is I put this to like a low viscosity kind of range, which was disappointing because I did mid, mid viscosity on the last one. Um, and we're only talking like four, sorry, 7% difference. So 15 proof points, um, which hey, 7% has all the difference, um, especially like viscosity wise and, and flavor. So it would have been interesting. I guess it would have just been like an eight year old bottle in bond, really. But mm. yeah, as I kind of give it a good Kentucky chew, it's kind of give me a good spice kick across the palate. Um, but it's mainly remaining in like the front of the tongue, a bit on the sides, so like super, super hot there. And then it's like a even warming mouth coat, which is good. Uh, take it on the taste and we'll break it down to the finish. So, just on the finish there. Whoa. Okay. So, I wouldn't say it's high in proof, but it's giving me like this big kind of oak note, just like straight off the bat. Then I want to say it like fades. Um, sorry, it doesn't. It moves to more of like an orange peel kind of vibe. And then it fades back to a oak note again. It's kind of like trailing off, which is very similar to the bottle in bond minus the, the orange peel and the big initial oak. Uh, and then it's like, <clears throat> as it's kind of like leaving. My, so it's got like a long finish. I didn't actually write that down. It's got a long finish on it. Um, and... a little bit there because I don't want to waste it um it's kind of got like this after that long finish of oak it's kind of got this um, hint of chocolate so bringing that whole s'mores thing together which actually makes it rather enjoyable I'm super happy with this drop um but which leads me down to the buy barrel pass um 
what would I do with it is a real question. So what I enjoyed about it was 75 bucks in like the Australian market makes it our cheapest single barrel offering on the market. We're normally living around, oh, our next one is the Blanton's Green Label. If you're not familiar with what that is, uh, that's like 80 proof Blanton's. Um, but it's not age stated, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, once again, like single barrel product. Um, then you kind of move up to like your Jim Beams, your other Blantons. I'm trying to look around to see what else is single barrel behind me. Um, you got your Russells. Uh, that's living around the $80 mark now. Um, I think... I think that's it so but the problem is is 43.3 percent so it don't tell me you stopped we're still going good i'm surprised it's listened to me at this point um so yeah we're at the 75 dollar mark so it's great for the australian market it's not great if you were looking for a higher proof for 75 bucks but we shall keep moving um it's a great multi-layer finish um especially like those big oak notes those orange peel notes back to the oak then kind of to the chocolate um i really enjoyed that finish especially like long finish i'm more of a nose guy but if it was something for me to kind of grab hold of it was definitely the finish um and yeah it just lost me at the low proof there as well so was kind of disappointed with it on that aspect but other than that i would drop this down to a bar rather than a buy <clears throat> i really wish i had it at a higher proof but at the same time you can buy the bottle in bond for 75 bucks so you are probably better off doing that but i guess they all have their pros and cons so yeah i guess for aussie market mm, it's hard maybe rewatch the uh, Evan Williams 100 proof and then kind of like work it out from there see what ones you guys would reckon off I guess my tasting notes um, or if you can pick it up for 58 bucks definitely do that because it's a steal um, but yeah thank you guys so much for watching we are reaching the end of uh, my allotted time so hopefully you guys enjoyed me drinking from a bowl because it uh, I definitely wasn't able to get my normal notes I would have been able to, but at least I was able to get a little bit and kind of make that work. So yeah, hopefully I get my glassware back by next week. I'm very excited. Should be good fun. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. Uh, let me know if you've tried the single barrel because I'd love to hear your thoughts. But anyway, I will let you guys go. Love y'all. Enjoy your Whiskey Wednesday. Peace.